<laughs> I love it. Got it. Got it. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you today. I hope you've all had a great Thanksgiving and, and looking forward to the Christmas holidays. And what a great time to be a part of Relive now. And, you know, I, one of the things I, I've said for 22 years of being part of Relive is that this is one of the best times of the year, the year to be around people and take, take away the word prospect, but just put in the word listen. To just be around people and listen to what they're saying and play detective and discover what's going on in their life. And, you know, don't do it in a, in a thing of, well, gosh, if I talk to them about this, talk to them about that, I'll be able to get them in to relive or whatever. Just, just go be their friend. You go be their, be their friend and just get them talking about their life and what's going on. And all of a sudden, all this stuff is going to unfold and you're going to find all kinds of things in their life that potentially that Relive could be a solution for. And then what do we do as we find those people who have those needs to be filled is what do we do a lot of times is we share a story with them, don't we? And so as, as we look at sharing stories with people, when is the best time to share a story with somebody? When is that? You know what I've discovered? The best time to share a story with someone is when they are willing to listen. The best time to share a story with somebody is when they are willing to listen. How many of you are like me and have shared stories with people that didn't want to listen? Anybody? Am I all, all by myself on this one? No, no. And you know, it, my mother, my mother used to say, tell me, because in, apparently in my younger age, I was always trying to help people, apparently, because she would say to me, she said, Jim, you can only help people who want help. Those who are willing. And, you know, and I, so I remember that from a young age. And so it's the same thing with us with Relive. And so what we're going to do this morning to get started, we've got two great stories on the call with us. I've got Colleen Kilton and Lara Habas. And which one of you ladies wants to raise your hand first and say, I want to go first? Okay, Colleen, <laughs> go for it. I'm so competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I have to get my little timer out here. So I'm, I'm going to check your time in there, Jim Chabin. <laughs> okay. My name is Colleen Kielton, and I'm from South Bend, Indiana. I have a background in family management with four kids and martial arts and holistic health. When I found these products, I was seven months pregnant with my fourth baby boy and absolutely exhausted. The only reason I got up was to get things done, to get back to bed. Within three days on this product, I was up wallpapering the bathroom at 9.30 at night. I actually thought it was more like 4.30 in the afternoon. I continued with this amazing energy. I followed my kids into their Taekwondo classes. I became a second degree black belt, a state champion several times over, and I became an instructor. So not only was I living myself, I was helping other people build their strength up and enter in their state championships and become black belts. So my kids got a whole different kind of mom than the one who never wanted to get out of bed. And I will always be on these products. Awesome. Now, Colleen, you stay right there. Don't leave yet. And Lara, you come on and share your story. Hi, I'm Lara from Oklahoma, and my background is ministry. When we found We Live, we had just come back from the mission field. I suffered with allergies, asthma, migraines, carpal tunnel. This time of year, I'd be on inhalers and over-the-counter medications. I became the guinea pig. I started the products first. And lo and behold, my migraines were becoming fewer and far between hypoglycemic sugar levels, every time I get my sugar tested now, it's at 80, period. And also I, my allergies are just well under control. When Lunar Rejects came out, my goodness, my triglycerides, which were in a high normal, went to 76. <laughs> it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And then also um, I had a very ill-advised knee surgery and they told me it went wrong, it went awry. They told me only a knee replacement would help it. I went, oh, no, no, no. I doubled down on the Relive products. And here I am two years later. I walk and run and bike about four miles a day. 
and that has never been a problem since. And so I am so grateful for these products. I will never stop taking them. Awesome, Lara. Thank you. Okay, Colleen, let's let's go back to you. And would you share? You know, you shared the opportunity, the real products, real business with people. What what's your story with that? Okay. So when I started the business, I started the products, I wanted nothing to do with the business. I wouldn't even look at the compensation plan, but I did want to earn money. And I finally looked at the first part of the compensation plan and I saw how I could make $20 uh, a customer. And that added up in my mind, but I still didn't actively pursue until COVID hit. It had always been my retirement plan, but um, COVID inspired me to start that. I was absolutely out of money. I couldn't work and I'd maxed up my credit card. So I couldn't even afford my own product. And I got on the phone and I started talking to people. And I, I reached the top profit level in two months back when it was it was uh, $5,000 to, to reach it. And uh, I earned hundreds of dollars in bonuses. My top month was $1,200. And I know if I can make $1,200 in a month, I can make it in a day. And that's my plan because I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Love it, Colleen. And Lyra, what, what, tell us your, your story. Well, you know, when we came back from the mission field, we had two major needs, health and finances. We came back with four children and no savings and living in California, by the way. And that's when we found out about Relive. And before I got my results, I started sharing it with people because I'd heard so many stories. And the first person I shared it with got results with fibromyalgia, Meniere's disease her husband with lupus. And I thought, what is this? My husband was my biggest cheerleader. He says, you know what, go ahead and share. And so I did. The first person that I brought into Relive became a master affiliate. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> and we had a party and uh, without even knowing what to do, our team of support came. We sold almost all of our products and I pocketed in two months, $2,000. I, I remember opening up a Relive account. I've always said that Relive was going to be our retirement package. Little did I know that uh, it was going to be more than that. My husband uh, lost his job. Well, uh, anyway, the ministry changed and not two years ago or a year and a half ago. And uh, Relive has been what's kept us afloat ever since. I have been able to stay at home. I paid my husband's grad school fees, $28,000 in tuition and fees. We still would have been in debt. It had not been for the Relive income. You know, I think Relive for us is more significant now than it ever has been, and I will never stop sharing. Awesome, awesome, both of you, Colleen and Lara. Now, both of you, if you would, stay with me. I'm gonna talk a little bit and I'll be right back to you. You know, as we, as we look at the topic of stories, have you guys ever felt that, since you've been in Relive, that the topic of sharing stories can also be one of the most controversial things in Relive? Am I the only one smiling here? But, you know, and, and, and the reason I say controversial is because, because some people will say, well, a person's got to hear five stories before they get started on the product. Another one says they got to hear seven stories before they get started on the product. Another one says they got to go to a meeting, get started on the product. And, and so, it, you know, it's, and, and here's what I here's what I really want to convey this morning. The one message I want to convey. It's not right or wrong. If you get somebody started, however you do it was right for that person. And not everybody is going to get started the same way. You know, too many times I truly believe we try and put everybody in the same little box. But guys, we're not all the same. And, you know, I've, I've had people that, that have just told me, they said, Jim, because I'll, I'll say, well, hey, the, you know, we'll get to the point, they make a decision, they want to get started on the product. And I said, well, gosh, hold on a second, I'll share a story with you. And they just sit back and they say, Jim, I want to get started on the product. I didn't ask you to put me on a story. And, I, and you know what I do with those people? I say, that's great. I mean, I immediately get them started on the products. And, and guys, I'm just gonna tell you, it just, you know, not everybody's the same. Uh, just, just be careful about trying to put everybody in the same little box. What's, a, 
what's, impo what's important is what you do with them after they get started on the products. Because if they, you know, there's some people that want to listen to a story that day, that moment. There are some people that don't want to listen to a story, but those people who don't want to listen to a story at some point in the future, as you connect with them, you're going to be able to connect them to a story. So don't let it be a stumbling block for you. And, you know, what is it? What is it, as we heard Colleen and Lara share their stories today, that if we had a new person listening to their stories, what is it that the new person would catch? Their results. The new person, 99% of the time, what they catch is their results. And you say, well, Jim, no, nah, that's not really true. Well, I can tell you, you know, I think I used to think that I had the world's greatest story until I started putting people on the phone with Pam Keelan. And here I would tell them about my neck pain and how debilitating it was and all this stuff and, you know, how horrible it was. And I put them on the phone with Pam Thielen, who they didn't even know. And she talked about this word called fibromyalgia and how she could run circles around the house with her kids. And the people would get off the call and they'd go, Jim, did you hear that that lady was, she was able to run around the house now because she started taking these products? And I'm sitting there going, did you not hear me say that I couldn't even turn my head? And see, it's usually not our story that will, that will drive someone forward. It's someone else's results. So as we hear stories, what is it that every story, I, I want to say every, but most stories have in common. Most stories have in common a past, a present, and a future. Most stories have in common the past, the present, and the future. And see, as we share stories with people, what is it that people grab a hold of? The present. They grab a hold of the present of what that person is able to do now because of either putting the products in their body or going out and sharing the real of opportunity with other people. Because see, and, and, and see, and I, I, it just, this became so clear to me about three months ago. And I've known it. And I tried to share my story that I tried to share my story that way for years. But this lady said, you know, I used to deal with this and this and this. But because of Relive, here's what I'm able to do now that I didn't used to be able to do. And this other thing that was bothering me, that here's what's happened now, is that I can do this, this, and this because I'm taking the Relive products. And this lady, every time she talked about one of her issues of the past, she brought the present into and through the past out the door to where as I was listening, and I've heard this lady's story, I don't know how many times. And I heard her share her story this way. And I called her back afterwards. I said, oh my, do you understand how powerful what you just shared with us all? Because what she, what she stopped doing she stopped focusing on the past. She stopped focusing on the past. Little story for you. How many of you, how many of you, like me, every one of us, have focused sometimes too much about the past? I, was, I, have, a, I have a good friend that, that I was speaking with here five or six months ago. And he gave the greatest explanation, description of how to deal with the past, some of the things about the past I've ever heard. And he said, you know, Jim, everybody has stuff they deal with from their past. Everybody. Ailments, sicknesses, things in their brain growing up, everybody's got it. And he said, well, but what most people forget to do 
is they forget to focus on the present. Because as we think of the word present, I think it's very important that we remember the word P-R-E-S-E-N-T, present. It's the gift, the present is the gift we are given for this moment. And then, and then he said, now just imagine this. He said, what if you had, a, you decided you want to get in a helicopter and, the, and the, the helicopter trip was over the ocean. So you get in there and the pilot says, buckle up, Jim. And you notice, you look down at your, you look down beside your chair and you see this backpack there and you, you, and you think, gosh, I wonder what the backpack's for. And so you get five miles out in the ocean and the helicopter pilot, he just stops and he's hovering about 10 foot above the water. And he says, hey, put on that backpack. And you reach down to pick up and you say, okay. So you reach down to pick up this backpack. And this backpack is full of rocks. It's heavy. And so you strap this backpack on. And he said, and so the pilot goes, okay, now, why don't you just, just jump out? Let's see, let's see how good you can swim with the backpack on. And so you jump into the water and here he's got, you know, 30 pounds of rocks in this backpack. And you're probably like me, you have a little trouble floating anyway. And so you're down there just swimming as hard as you can. And the, and the pilot yells down, swim harder, swim harder. You'll get stronger, just swim harder. And you go, that's all I've done all my life is try to swim harder. And then all of a sudden you have this epiphany and you go, oh, I wonder what would happen if I take the backpack full of rocks off and let the past go away and let them rocks sink down to the bottom of the sea of forgetfulness, would it be easier for me to swim? And, and you know, and so it's important that we, you know, I mean, none of us are going to forget our past. I mean, we're just, that's just totally impossible. But the thing that is going to determine what does determine Lyra's outcome, what's determined Colleen's outcome with the products or with the business is that they're focusing on the present. They're focusing on the present because the present is the only thing that they can control. See, there's a question I asked myself, and it's right here on my desk, on a three by five card, and it says, what would the person I am intending on becoming do now? What would the person I'm intending on becoming do now? I used to have the word next in there, but next is too future focused. And the only way that the future is going to happen is if I take care of the present. Take care of your present, guys. Take care of that present. And, you know, just remember, your story is no different than mine or Lyra's or Colleen's. Our stories have a past. They have a present and they have a future. And the future, guys, really is two minutes from now. But the present is what can I do right now to become the person I intend to become? What, and, and we were talking earlier about, about when we, you know, we've all invited people to come to meetings. We've all invited people to come to Zooms. And, you know, some of them come, some of them don't. Who do we focus on? Who do we feel bad about? The ones that don't show up. The guys, I'm going to tell you, there's, there's 30, 40 some people on this Zoom call. I'm not focused on the, the, the 500 to 2,000 that should be on here this morning. I'm focused on you. And so as you go do your meetings, presentations, Zooms, what you want to do is you want to focus on who's in front of you because that's who you can help now. And see, uh, you know, 
as we, as we look at stories, the other part of the story that I think is so important, and I talked about this at, at, at conference, and I had a couple, and, and it's about, and it's really about, um, you know, John Maxwell, about 10 years ago, did a video, and, and he, it was about telling your story. And he said, if you're telling, if, this, if the story you're telling today is 10 years old or older, you need to get a new story. And it just stopped me in my tracks. And I shared that at conference and, and see, had a couple, had some people come up to me and some of the people were very positive. <laughs> Some of the people weren't too happy about it at all. And they said, Jim, you forgot where you come from. And I said, no, let me tell you something. I, can ne I will never, ever forget eating macaroni and cheese for dinner, lunch, and breakfast. I will never forget not having enough money at the end of the month. I mean, I'll never forget where I come from. But here's what I, here's what I'm really excited about is what is the new story that I can create today that's going to keep my life exciting? Because here's, here's what you're going to find. As you create a new story, your grandkids, your children, their spouses, those people around you, they're just going to fall more in love with you. And see, the other thing is this, is that some people say, well, well, gosh, so, but Jim, I don't want to work as hard as I did 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, I'm not going to either. I'm just not, I'm not capable of working 18 and 20 hours a day for five, six months in a row no more. I can't do that. Can I do it for one or two days? Yes, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, guys, I encourage you to think about what is the new story you are going to create? And whose life are you going to add excitement to? Um, you know, I would like to now, Colleen and Lara, come on and tell us about your present. What is it that you are going to do Maybe let's just say you got, let's give you Saturday, Saturday and Sunday off. Let's just talk about Monday. No, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what is, what is the next thing you're going to do to make your present better? I'm going to do something crazy. I'm applying to my PhD for my PhD and uh, in mind body medicine. So, I'm going to create a set of interview questions, which is uh, prospecting nature, getting to know people, getting to know you know what what their interests are and what their pains and and frustrations are and how they're they're uh, addressing them. And uh, that's going to be a nice prospecting tool for me. I also have this little ninety day challenge sheet. So I've got new people new customer, established customer, distributor, and established distributor. And so that's all on one page because I get too scatterbrained. So I've been doing that for today's day 33. Awesome. And yeah. So that's that's my my focus is to do the fundamentals and let the rest take care of itself. Because yep. it's easy to take care of somebody who's excited. <laughs> It's, well, it's see, yeah. well, and see, here's here's the whole deal. I any of us on this on this Zoom today can look at anything we've ever done in our lives that have ended that has ended up positively or successful, if you want to use that word. And the way that it happened was that we took care of the present. Mm -hmm. We did something now. Mm -hmm. And Lara, how about you? Oh. Well, yeah, Saturday is not a day off either for me. I I have um, I've got a wonderful new distributor that's on right now. She's got me with an appointment I think today, and then I have two other people that I um, planned that I have already planned to talk to today. They know that I'm going to call. 
um, some Kari Montgomery talks a lot about pain point. What is their pain point? And I really have, that's really been able to fine tune my listening and then it fine tunes my messaging. So uh, having done that, uh, it just, it just uh, brings a whole new kind of type of listening to people. So anyway, uh, I've also got my tracking sheet. What am I going to do today? I have this kind of the same saying, Jim, uh, don't let the, the, don't let the lira of, no, allow that the lira of the future be proud of what the lira of the present is doing. You know? Amen. <laughs> so, I love that. I and love so that. I, you know, that goes from cleaning my house to everything. I mean, what you're talking about, Jim, are life lessons. And so I want the lira of tomorrow to be happy about what the lira today has done. So that's my mantra. Awesome. Awesome. And and you know, I just encourage each one of you, you know, share your share how you were in the past but when i mean you get to the when you get to the, get to the point of your story of how you really feel how you emotionally physically spiritually feel about your results today and what you can do because 5 10 15 20 years ago in the present you made a decision i'm going to write a new story 22 years ago, I made a decision to write a new story. That's why I'm on this call today. I made a decision to write a new story. At 46 years of age, my story was not done. They said it was, but I was not going to accept that. And so, guys, just, just grab a hold of, your, of the present so that your future can be what you want it to be. And as we talk to these people, you know, when I talk to people and share my story, I not only say, this is what I can do today because of, but also say, because I am consistent in taking these products, I can do this today. Because I want them to hear the word consistent if they will be consistent taking these products, if they'll be consistent sharing with other people, everything takes care of itself because the science is all there. Well, I want to thank, thank uh, Colleen and Lyra so much for being here today. Also, Don, Don is going to be doing the opportunity presentation this Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern time. Uh, guys, and, and as always, Mindy, thank you for making us all look good and keeping this thing running. But guys, have a great Relive Week, and we're done in 29 and a half minutes. I love it. Great nice job, everybody. you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. This was absolutely wonderful. This will Thank be you. on the Charge Thank Facebook you. page later today. Thank Bye, you guys. so much. Have a good Thank day. Thank you so much.